What up, YouTube? Today, I'm going to knock out the craziest customs I've ever done. If you watch my channel, you know I do a lot of questionable things with shoes, but this pair is going to hit different. I'll breeze through the process and show you every step of the way, and I'll do my best to speed through the boring stuff. Hopefully by the end, I'll also get some shots on foot, and as a bonus, I'll completely customize this box so they match the kicks. So stick around for that. Okay, let's get started. So a friend of mine sent me this video by a TikToker named Nike Mikey Only Page. I have no idea who this is, but it looks like a shoe customizer. Anyway, my friend really likes these and asked if I could replicate them. I said yes, but I don't recommend it. For one, I don't like painting midsoles. The rubber is not porous and the paint will eventually flake off. And two, this guy's using ultra flat black paint, which looks cool in pics, but it's a nightmare to work with. And scratches and scuffs just by touching it. That said, he still wanted them, so I'll do my best to help. After receiving a fresh pair, the first thing I did was create a digital mock-up. I chopped up a bunch of stock art and laid it out in Photoshop. Next, I ordered all the colors I'm going to need. I see there's green aglets and debris, yellow paint on the tongue and heel tab, and a lot of matte black. There's a lot of ultra flat black paint out there on the market, but I went with this Angelus flat black leather paint. It won't be super flat, but it goes down better and it will be more durable. Next, I made a layout of all the visuals I think I'm going to need. Now I'll visit shop115.com and order three sheets of water transfer labels. Fast forward two weeks and here they are. Each order comes with four sheets, so this should be more than enough. Now let's dig in, but before I do, please click the like button if you're feeling my content and please subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. It would really help. Thank you. Now let's go over everything I'm going to need. Fresh white sneakers, leather deglazer, cotton balls and q-tips, paint brushes, paint, water transfer labels, sharp razor blades, a cutting board, a small cup of water, masking tape, mini iron, wax paper, a heat gun, and a bottle of clear matte finish spray paint. The first thing I'll do is remove the laces. Next, I'll add the yellow paint to the embroidery on the heel tab and tongue. I'm doing this first because applying this requires me to touch the kicks a lot, and I'd rather do this before laying down the black paint. Taking my time, I'll slowly add yellow to the stitching and try not to mess this up. I'll soak a thin brush in the paint and let it slowly absorb into the stitching. If you do this right, the paint will find its way. Looks good. Next, I'll hit the tongue. Same process, let the paint bleed into the fabric. Okay, the yellow's done. While that's drying, I'll hit these aglets and debris with green, just like the reference pair. I'll hang the laces out of this cup so they can dry properly without getting smudged. The debris, they're a little harder to paint. I'll add a bunch of thin coats while heating them with my heat gun. Now that those steps are out of the way, I'll start adding my black base coat. First, I'll tape up the tongue to keep it protected. After that, I'll remove the factory coating using leather deglazer. I'll rub a cotton ball soaked with the deglazer to any areas I plan on painting. By removing this factory finish, it will help the new paint sink into the pores of the leather. Some of these areas are really hard to get to, so I'll use a Q-tip soaked in deglazer for that. Okay, the shoes are prepped and ready to paint. I normally recommend taping any areas you don't want to get paint on, but I'm pretty steady, so I'll skip that part. I'm laying down the black paint in very thin coats. You never want to just glom it on because the end result will look bad. Flat paint is harder to lay down than gloss paint, so I'm taking my time by adding multiple thin coats. In the end, I'll probably add four thin coats for each shoe, allowing time to dry between coats. I'll speed things up and jump forward. Done. Check it out. I can see a few small areas where I messed up, but overall they look good. Now comes the really tedious part. Using my razor blade, I'm going to have to cut out all of these images. This is going to take a lot of time, so I'll speed through it. Okay, looks like all my graphics are cut, so now I'll grab a cup of water and start soaking each label one at a time. I'll leave the graphics submerged for about 30 seconds or until the back of the transfer paper starts sliding around. Next, I'll check the reference shots and do my best to place them in a similar way. I'll gently place the graphics in the areas I want and slowly pull off the backing. Once it's laid down, you can still slide it around and position it a little. Next, I'll take a clean paintbrush and run it over the graphic. This removes any water or air bubbles. Later on, I'll hit it with a heat gun and bond it to the paint, but right now, I could still peel it off if I wanted to. I'll keep repeating this process until I'm happy with the amount of coverage. Alright, it's been a while and it's looking pretty good, so now I'll bond the graphics to the paint using my heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use a hair dryer. Anyway, you want to do this quickly and not get too close with the heat gun or else you could melt the graphics. I've done it and it's mad annoying. They're now bonded to the shoe and looking pretty good. So I'll move on to the next pair, just repeating the same process. All right, the paint is dry and the kicks are almost done. So let's add the laces back and see how they look. I'm happy with the outcome, but that gloss contrast between the paint and labels is bothering me. 
I was going to try and dim down the gloss by using my mini iron and some wax paper, but changing plans. Instead, I'll spray everything with a clear matte finish. This will not only blend the labels with the paint, but it will add an extra layer of protection, so old buddy who asked for these can hopefully wear them more than once. Okay, here they are. While they're not exactly like the ones in the video, they're pretty close and I'm happy with the end result. I'm still concerned about the paint on the midsole, but as long as he doesn't drive in these and walks really, really defensively, I think he'll be able to get a few wears out of them before the paint starts flaking off. As promised, as a final touch, I'm going to customize the box. I'll quickly spray it black and as soon as it dries, I'll add a few of the leftover transfer labels. I also picked up some yellow tissue paper to match the theme. These are obviously unnecessary details, but for me, part of the whole experience in owning a special pair of kicks is fun packaging. And we're done. What do you think? Are these cool? Would you rock them? Or did I just waste my life making these? Please give me your honest opinions in the comments below. I can take it. Now that these are done, I'll ship these to my friend in California and hopefully he'll send me a few shots on foot. So it's been a few days and the kicks made it to Cali. My friend is happy with them and he sent me a few shots. Check it out. So in conclusion, this was a lot, but I'm happy with the end result. It wasn't exactly like the reference pair, but eh, close enough. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please drop a like for your boy, please subscribe, and ring that notification bell to stay up to date on my latest videos. You could also check me out on TikTok and Instagram at E21Life. I'm not super active on there, but I do post random stuff you might like. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, stay safe, everyone. Peace.